It's me again, Chloe. Guess what the topic is? All right, here we are again. This time we're going to be learning how to move the rook. And as you can see on the board, there are two lines there. You already know what they are. We've got those horizontal lines, which we call ranks. And then we've got the green line, which is a vertical line, which we call file. And that's basically how rook moves up and down, right or left, as many squares as you want. But let's see some more examples. Okay, here's the rook in the middle of the board. And those are all the squares that the rook can move to. Either one at a time or many squares at a time. It's your choice. And here the rook is in the corner. But the same thing applies. You know, you can move as many squares as you want. Either just one square at a time or many squares at a time. Okay, we're going to do a little game now. We're going to try to transfer that rook from A1 to A8 and see how many moves it takes it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 moves. All right, um, now the problem with that is it looks like a pretty long journey. Can we speed it up? Can we find a shortcut? And the answer is yes, of course because we can capture this pawn like this, and then next move we can capture this one, and then next move we can get to A8. And that's only three moves long. And I definitely call that a shortcut, okay? But that's how rooks capture. We simply remove the piece from the board and we put our rook on that square, okay? That's how it goes, pretty simple. Okay, let's see our next example. And this time I'm just gonna make a few moves with the rooks so that you get used to them. Okay, first I'm gonna make a short move here. I'm gonna move the rook to B1, a pretty short move. And Black's gonna do something very similar. He's gonna move his rook over there. And I'm gonna make a long move with the white rook. I'm gonna take the rook all the way down to B8. And now black is going to make a long move sideways like this. And now pay attention because now I'm going to put the rook on the same file where the black king is. And now that black king is set to be in check because the white rook is attacking it. Whenever you're in check, you've got to stop that check somehow or else the game is over because it's checkmate. But don't you worry about this too much right now. I'll be explaining checks later on. So the king is going to move somewhere and now I'm going to make another long move again with the rook all the way there. The black rook is going to go there. And now let's pay attention because the black king is on the same file as the um, black rook. And white can actually take advantage of this because he can put his rook here. And as you can see, the king is in check again. It means the king has to move somewhere and then we can pick up the rook on e7. Pretty simple. I mean, you know, black didn't play very well. He shouldn't have played that move, rook to e7, losing his rook. But this just goes to show you, well, you know, it was just a demo of um, how the rook moves. So let's move on. Now, where do we put the rooks at the beginning of the game? How, how do we set them up when we set up the pieces? Okay, rooks go in the corners. The white rooks go on a1 and a8. And the black rooks go over there. And then we have the pawns and everything else. But we'll be taking a look at these later on in the game. And I think that's just about everything you need to know right now. I'll be explaining a little bit about a strategy um, later on when we learn, you know, which squares are best for the rooks and why. And we'll be talking about open files, half open files or closed files and so on. But for the time being, that's all you need to know, really.